another pretty quiet night for the offense. How was Dane Dunning able to execute and, and keep you guys pretty much at bay? Yeah, I mean, you know, kind of sinker and then and then slowing us down with spin and looked like he had, um, you know, was able to get some weak contact off the bat with the with the spin and and get some chases. You know, probably probably you know getting good break on it late you know that made it a little difficult to pick up um but you know we just we gotta we gotta mount more i mean simple as that it seemed like a lot of guys were swinging early in the count first pitch mm-hmm. quite a few times were you okay with that method of attack that approach from yeah your i mean as a whole? yeah i mean it's it's ultimately about getting a good pitch to hit and and you know you know for everyone and different nights that's going to be a little bit different all the time and um yeah i mean we got to find a way to you know we got to, I mean, we got to, we got to do better to generate some offense. And then, yeah, he, he heard out, which was probably, you know, the player calling him out. I think he was out on replay regardless, but um, yeah, I mean, you gotta, you gotta make sure they're right. What do you think has been, um, I guess, ailing Michael King the most? <clears throat> it's been a pretty rough go for him lately. Yeah. I um, feel like we identified something in, in his setup that, um we feel like we'll kind of unlock him a little bit help him get some of that crispness power back um so we noticed something there um you know obviously it didn't manifest itself tonight although first pitch break you know kind of getting ambushed there and then i thought he settled in and threw the ball well but we just got to unlock that next layer of crisp power that you know we're used to seeing with michael and it shows itself whether it's on the sinker or the breaking ball you know that extra bit of sharpness that he gets when he's when he's lights out you know so we got to get him back to that um feel like it is a little something mechanical that's been identified so it's just about um you know really the reps and making that adjustment you talked about what a different type of hitter john carlo is does that make it difficult to tell when he's maybe on the cusp of, of getting right um i, I don't know i, I mean he, you know it can come at any time but it you know it's as simple as just getting in that strong position um with a little bit of rhythm and um and being on time you know i feel like he's a little you know from a timing standpoint just a little off and not having that really good set and load like he does when he when he's kind of locked in so just got to fight through it right now and you know he's got to find a way gary <clears throat> Pinch hitting Donaldson for McKinney there. Is that just a matchup decision? Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Right here in the middle. Um, in the eighth, going to uh, Higashioka over Donaldson, just what what was the thought there? Um, well, I mean, I, I didn't want to throw out the whole bench, and then I knew, you know, Bowers might be in play for the lefty as well. You know, I had Bader there, but um, I, I was comfortable with Higgy versus the lefty. You know, I was, you know, I, I like I like Higgy against the lefty in that spot, and he's going into the game. John and Meredith. Yeah, I, I know uh, John Carlo is very streaky. D- does he look like he's fully healthy to you, though? Yeah. I mean- I, I do think he is, um, and that you know that's one thing I've kind of checked with him, um, and and he's good. I mean, he's yeah kind of looked at me and and let me know that yeah I'm I'm healthy and fine. You know, last year when he was coming back at the end of the season, um, and he was struggling those three weeks going into the playoffs. You know, I think he was still working through stuff, and that was part of the reason. But he felt like he needed to play to kind of figure out how to you know, play not all the way there physically. Uh, now I do feel like he is there. Okay, and, I mean, you batted him third. Obviously, you, you don't have your best hitter in the lineup, so somebody's got a bad third. I mean, you're just looking at pedigree there, not who's hot, who's not kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, fair enough. He's got to get there at some point. Meredith. <clears throat> Aaron, just early in all this loss in, in some of the lack of offense and whatnot, Clark Schmidt's yeah. performance against a very tough offense on, on the other side. How was he successfully able to, to really navigate through that? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, you know there, the, a lot of the good things that happened tonight from a pitching standpoint, and that started with Clark. Um, 
you know, continues to throw the ball really well. Um, you know, he, man, he's 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 just he's just growing up and getting better and getting more experience and getting more savvy and I think a better grasp and understanding of his pitch package and how he wants to attack. Um, but yeah, he was really strong again tonight, using everything. You know, you saw sinker, you saw cutter, you saw curveball, um, and then the slider too. So. Um, just doing a good job of, of, you know, avoiding avoiding mistakes in the strike zone, and then his stuff's really playing, and uh, you know he's remaining somewhat unpredictable as well. But another strong one for him.